is Good Morning Transfers. Danny Collins joins the transfer team this morning with 10 days to go in this window. Strikers seem to be top of everyone's wish list. Could Edison Cavani be on his way to the Premier League? We will bring you the very latest. And remember, there are plenty of ways for you to get involved. Yeah, and it might not be just Cavani on the move. Could that, that deal have implications on the future of Olivier Giroud? We're expecting developments on Christian Eriksen's future later today. I promise. I promise. <laughs> now, Daniel Levy will meet into representatives while Jose Mourinho holds his news conference at lunchtime. And at Newcastle, they've got one through the door and another one is closing in. We'll have all the details this hour. And a reminder, you can, of course, download the latest Transfer Talk podcast right now. It's available for you on iTunes, Spreaker and the Sky Sports website. But we are going to start this morning with the very latest on Edison Cavani. He has, of course, been linked to a move to the Premier League. And Keith, it seems like a move away from PSG is on the cards for Cavani. Um, yeah, it certainly looks like that. And that has been the case for the last 24 hours or so. We found out yesterday that Edison Cavani has put in a transfer request. Now, we found that out when PSG's sporting director, Leonardo, told reporters over in Paris that the 32-year-old, soon to be 33, had asked to leave following that, that approach from Atletico Madrid. Now, despite mooted interest from, from Chelsea, from Manchester United, they have been mentioned in, in dispatches uh, with Cavani. Uh, our chief reporter, Brian Swanson, told us last night that Atletico, at this stage, are the only club to have formally expressed an interest in signing the, the veteran striker this month. Of course, he's currently out injured, as we know, soon to return though, so they will have a, a fit Cavani um, back, Atletico, if they do manage to sign him. Of course, we know he's out of contract uh, in the summer, and crucially, someone at, um, at PSG yesterday told Brian Swanson, uh, and they were, they, they wanted to make this clear, he's only two goals away from his 200th goal for PSG, and that's something I think he probably wants to reach. So yeah, he wants to reach that, but then at the same time, he's handed in this transfer Quit. So mixed messages there. And the PSG boss, Thomas Tuchel, last week, of course, said that he didn't want him to leave. So PSG want him to stay. He wants to go. I think we know there's only one outcome. Atletico in for, in for him. Will Chelsea or will Manchester United, in desperate need for a striker, make a late bid to bring him in? You know, let's wait and see. Yeah, I mean, you said it there. Uh, Atletico Madrid, the only club to formally express an interest. But uh, it's so many Premier League clubs needing to sign a striker in this window. So the question is, could we see him playing in England, Frank Lampard, he was actually asked about Cavani in his news conference yesterday and this is what he had to say. He was a great player, um, <clears throat> played against him and um, I always loved his mentality and his attitude and obviously his goal scoring record speaks for itself. I'm not absolutely aware of what the situation is, so we'll see. His experience, would that add to the group though? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's an experienced player but so are many other players out there. So. You know, I think we are um, young as a squad and we know about the transition. So, yeah, the idea of, of bringing in experience is something I'm certainly not um, looking absolutely away from because I think sometimes the younger players need a bit of help and if that's the case, then that may help us. Yeah, so that may help us, is what Frank Lampard said. Uh, Danny, good to have you on board with the transfer team this morning. Do you think Cavani is the type of player that Chelsea could do with? Uh, I think he'd be a good addition, um, certainly, you know, Abraham's had a good season so far, um, but a player like Cavani with his experience, I think he'd be a great addition for them. Not just Chelsea, obviously, there'll be interest from Manchester United, um, Spurs, I'd imagine. So it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. Um, but yeah, with his, with his record, as you've mentioned, proven goal scorer, great experience and uh, I'm sure there'll be a few clubs interested. Yeah, we actually had loads of people tweeting the show yesterday using that hashtag transfer talk, kind of saying, Manchester United, why are you not going in for Cavani? And Michael, we, we are talking about the amount of clubs looking for a striker. Why is he not being linked with every single Premier League club? Why are they not making a move for well, Cavani? I, I, I think Danny will be welcomed by fans at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium now because everyone's talking about <laughs> Chelsea and Manchester United. He just looks like the perfect striker. It's the January striker's window, isn't it, really? Every club we seem to be talking about needs a striker and Tottenham Hotspur need a striker desperately. It just seems to fit too well, doesn't it? The January striker, I mean, the, it, it surprises <laughs> me. The majority of his career has it's been spent in Italy. I, I didn't realise he hasn't even been into Spain yet, so he's got Atletico Madrid as an option, but he's never been 
he's never played in England as well. I mean, it's an exciting prospect for him. He's a young 32, isn't he? Mm. Like, you think of strikers at that age, Giroud's 33, and you think of him in his veteran years, but somehow with Cavani, perhaps the way he's looked after himself, he was a bit of a, a late developer, you still think of him as, as fairly young at 32, and you, st you still think he will be able to do a job. But I think the biggest problem, just to answer your question, Joe, will be the wages, and that is why there's only a certain amount of teams who will be yeah, able to afford the wages the Spurs, of Cavani. Yeah, I mean... A club like Manchester United, though. Well, I mean, like the Deloitte figures last Tuesday puts Tottenham in a, in a big spending bracket and supporters are now saying that, you know, money needs to be spent. Look, it, can I see Cavani joining Tottenham Hotspur if I... If I, I, don't, I don't think so, but... Mika, we've been on here for all of... <laughs> Three, three minutes and you're talking about Spurs already. We Danny can't even brought them up them. first. Danny brought them up first. You keep saying Man and Chelsea. I had to add another team who desperately needs a striker. That's, that's all I've done here. But, um, it's, it's worth mentioning as well. Obviously, like you said, he's a striker, but he's actually played out of position a lot. Look at the when he joined PSG. The first three seasons, he was played on the wing to make way for Zlatan Ibrahimovic up front. Similar situation with Uruguay, where Luis Suarez plays up front he's playing out on the wing. And you just saw when um, Zlatan left PSG and went on to Manchester United, that 2016-2017 season, um, Cavani scored nearly 50 goals that mm. season. And he, you know, you've welcomed the arrivals of Mbappe and Neymar, mm. and he's continued to lead the line, continued to score an incredible amount of goals, like you said, nearly 200 goals for the club, mm. PSG's leading goal scorer. Like you say, more Premier League clubs surely should be in for him, not just Chelsea. Mm. Manchester United, we know they need a bit of experience now as well. They need someone to yeah. kind of lead the line in that sense. So it's, it's, uh, surely they should be front of the queue. Yeah, well, they need, they need a powerful striker as well, don't they? They need someone who's going to hold the ball. And I'm just wondering, Danny, when you played, obviously, you like to get involved in the physical side of things. Uh, Cavani, yeah. would you have liked to have faced him? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think he's, he can do a bit of both. He, he can hold the ball up. Uh, he looks like he, he's a runner in behind as well. So he can do the options, obviously. Go back on the Spurs one. Um, playing the one up top, as they often do. I think he could, he could be a slot for them. Um, you know, they've tried Son up there and Lucas Moura's done a job at times. Harry Kane being out for a while, it could be an option for them. Um, again, Chelsea would be a shout, but they have got some options there. If he does go to Chelsea, then it could free up a, a move for Giroud or Batshuayi, as has been mentioned. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about that potential impact it might have. And Keith, it's funny you say he's quite, he seems quite young. I actually feel like he's been around <laughs> forever. Yeah. Uh, we can actually have a look at his stats as well. Because uh, I wonder, he's obviously been out injured a little bit. He's not played so much this season. And I just wonder, Emma, the that, that maybe has on people well, not going in it. for him. Or... Yeah, uh, it's hard though, isn't it? Because you say that... Um... You know, you say that you, we feel like we've been talking about him for a long time, but when you talk about PSG, I feel like we talk about Neymar, we talk about Mbappe, we don't really talk about yeah. Cavani as much. And you look here, I mean, only nine appearances, like we said, he's been injured, five of those from the bench as well, two goals. Um, but if you take a look at his overall career stats, I mean, it's not bad, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. Uh, this is just in the league as well, because like we said, in terms of PSG, he is closing in on 200 goals, but in the league, 136. Um, 78 goals at Napoli. I mean, yeah, the stats speak for themselves, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's obviously handed in this transfer request, but you think someone like Cavani and the way he plays football and his characteristics, you think he would be ready-made for the for the Premier League, and, and you think he would want to give it a, a, a bash? Now, obviously, Atletico Madrid are the only one, as I say, to formally express an interest. But could that change if Chelsea or Manchester United or Tottenham come in for him? Could that turn his head? Could he fancy a move to the Premier League? You could certainly see him playing for any of those three clubs as a centre forward. You know, you, you could envisage that in the Premier League. Yeah, and I mean, I just wanted to touch briefly on this kind of domino effect, the, the kind of merry-go-round effect that we quite often see in these transfer windows. And Emma, the potential implications of this one, not for Atletico Madrid actually, as well as Chelsea. Well, they've they've targeted Cavani. He's their key target. But they have said that. A fullback would be Alexander Lacazette, who obviously a familiar name over here playing for Arsenal. So it could have many implications. Yeah. It could, it's it's going to be a long 10 days, guys. Yeah. And also at Chelsea, Olivier Giroud, of course. Yeah, I was going to say that's the last thing the Arsenal supporters want to hear right now. Obviously, struggling for signings themselves. If they're to lose someone like Lacazette, you know, that would be a, a real problem for them. But uh, yeah, in terms of Giroud, you would think that if Chelsea were to go in for Cavani, we obviously heard Lampard, he has spoken about him. I think if there was no interest whatsoever, he wouldn't have answered that question at yeah. all. But yeah, you would think that the potential introduction of Cavani would then allow Giroud to go out to 
potentially into Milan. You would like to think he'll want to have the three, which would be Cavani, Abraham and obviously Batshuayi still there as well. Do you well. think as well, I mean, looking at Chelsea, I thought they were looking really well stocked. I mean, their season's gone a bit better than most expected. There's obviously, the transfer ban's been lifted. Yeah. We watched Newcastle, Chelsea on Saturday. Yeah. Has Frank Lampard gone and said, actually, do you know what? We've stood in the Champions League, top four, we want top four. I just need maybe a little bit more up there, as brilliant as T Tammy Abraham yeah. has done. Yeah, I don't think so. You say Tammy Abraham's had a great start to his uh, career at Chelsea, um, you know, scored a few goals. You know, there's still a long way in the season to go, as you mentioned, they're in the Champions League, they've still got a lot of games to play and just have that backup to go alongside him and, and to gain some experience if Cavani does go there. I think um, he'll be able to learn off him mm. and, um, you know, it's an interesting one if he does go there. As you say, Giroud will probably move on if that's the case. He seems to be down the pecking order at the minute mm. and I'm sure there'll be some takers, obviously, into Milan being mentioned. Right, let's get to the state of play and Emma. Yes, Inter Milan sporting director Piero Alcilio has confirmed to Sky in Italy that the Serie A club have reached an agreement to sign Chelsea winger Victor Moses. Aston Villa have completed the signing of Mbwana Samata from Genk for a fee rising to £10 million and staying with Villa, they are keen on Rio Ave striker Nedi Taremi. Newcastle expect to conclude the signing of Nabil Bentaleb today. Wolves are interested in AEK Athens striker Nelson Oliveira. Celta Vigo were told at the start of the transfer window that Southampton midfielder Oriol Romeo is not for sale and that remains the case amid reports a move to the Spanish side is imminent. Sheffield United are close to finalising a deal to find Nottingham Forest defender Jack Robinson. Southend have given forward Tom Hopper permission to discuss terms with Lincoln after accepting an offer from their fellow League One club. And Hibernian midfielder Josh Vella has joined League One side Shrewsbury Town on a free transfer. Right, stay with us so much on the way for you and good morning transfers including the very latest on Christian Eriksen or Inter Milan getting any closer to agreeing a deal with Tottenham. That's coming next. Hi there, welcome back to Good Morning Transfers. Let's bring you up to speed with the very latest on Victor Moses. We were talking about him yesterday and that possible reunion with Antonio Conte and Inter Milan. This one moving closer. Moses has arrived in Italy ahead of undergoing a medical at Inter Milan. He landed in Milan last night. This is from our colleagues in Sky in Italy. An agreement in principle has been made between Chelsea and Inter. This confirmed yesterday by Sky Italy. Moses, of course, has been on loan from Chelsea at the Turkish side. Fenerbahce this season. He's made six appearances. He's scored once, uh, but now that move to Inter Milan seems imminent. He's arrived in Italy ahead of undergoing that medical. Right, let's get more from Danny Collins now, who's joined Anton at the Skypad. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Danny joins me now. As you can see, look, Danny, you know, you've played for quite a few clubs. you played for Wales, obviously, you played for Stoke. But it's the Sunderland fans that are getting in touch via the transfer talk hashtag this morning. They want to know your thoughts about them and specifically their transfer activity. So let's start with the one we know. That's Bailey Wright, the centre-half coming in from Bristol City. We expect that deal to be done relatively soon. An international defender, a championship defender. Yeah. Is that a good signing and a need? Um, a need, maybe. I think, obviously, the, the formation that Phil Parkinson's playing is a 3-4-3. So with the three centre-halves, I think they've got four first team centre halfs on the book so it gives them a bit of stock there to bring him in good experience at championship level obviously we're at Bristol City and um, at Preston so yeah a good addition and uh, I'm sure he'll be bringing one or two more in in the next S week or so Sunderland though sit what just about in the playoffs at the moment mm -hmm. they might need a bit more to, to consolidate that yeah. I suppose so that's what Sunderland fans would be concerned about uh, centre midfield is an area we know they're looking to, imp uh, to improve in they've uh, had an interesting Greg Doherty from, um, from Rangers Ollie Norburn from Shrewsbury as well is, mm -hmm. are those names you want to see them linked with? Yeah I think um, obviously having watched a lot of the games this season um, centre midfield has, has been a perhaps a, a position where they've needed a different type of player, really. Um, they've got a lot of sitting midfielders, I, I'd say, so the box-to-box -box type of midfielder would be a good addition, I think, at this moment in time. And in recent weeks, they've obviously picked up, um, you know, six unbeaten in the league now, up into the playoffs, as you say, and uh, knocking on the door of the automatic spots. So uh, a lot of games to go. Um, some, some additions into the squad would be, would be good, I think, with the, with the running. Yeah, Greg Doherty was excellent at Shrewsbury in that box-to-box -box role last season, so it'd be interesting to see whether they can get a deal done for him. Uh, one person I want to ask you about is the man who was one of the stars of last deadline day a year ago, Will Grigg, got his big move to Sunderland, mm -hmm. but he's, the fire's been put out, hasn't it, since he's moved there. Uh, he's linked with uh, various clubs on loan now, including Salford and Blackpool. Do you think he needs a move away, or do you think Sunderland should try to keep it hold of him for the playoff push? 
I think it's been a bit of a tough spell for him at the club. He'll say it himself, I'd imagine. Um, he's had chances, things haven't gone well for him. Um, so perhaps, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, a fresh start for him elsewhere might do him good. Get away, get some games, get his confidence back and, and try and get some goals and, and have a look at it from there. But, but at the minute, you know, they brought Kyle Lafferty in last week. Um, so, you know, competition for places up top is, is hot as well. So it's interesting to see. But, yeah, I think at this moment in time, perhaps a spell away from the club might do him good. It's, it's January. Sunderland fans will be reminiscing, I'm sure, seeing you on the panel today, of times gone by, signings gone by. Look, you were at a club at a great time. Who was the one signing that you look back on and thought, what a player we managed to bring in? Yeah, there was a couple, I think. Um, obviously, we brought Johnny Evans in. Um, obviously, young at Man United, he came in, playing centre-half, good experience, playing alongside him. And who's the other one? And, and Dwight York, probably, yeah, in, in a different role for him. Yeah. He, he sat in front of the back four. Um, just kept it ticking over for us, brought some good experience, a calm head in the, in the middle of the pitch and um, a, a good lad off the pitch as well. You know, he liked a laugh and a joke, but when it was time to work, he Yeah, I mean, most people will remember Dwight York as, you know, in, in that Man United jersey, yeah. won't they? But they'll forget he was at Sunderland. How important was he for that team that eventually got up? He was. He came in at, at the right time, obviously. I think he was out in Melbourne at the time and I think Roy gave him a call, asked him if he fancied coming over and, and to be fair to him, he, he came in. Um, a good trainer and a good experience, as say, a wise head and sort of that middleman between the gaffer and the lads in a way. Um, but yeah, good experience and, and a good lad. Yeah, a time when Roy Keane brought in about what half a dozen players in yeah. a very short space of time. Wouldn't it be nice if a, if a manager would do that this January to, to liven things up? Yeah. Uh, Danny, if you want to mind joining the rest of the panel, because yeah, uh, they're going to talk about another player who's been highly linked with a move. Well, for the whole month, really, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. One of these ongoing sagas of this January window. Uh, let's get the very latest on Christian Eriksen. Michael, Inter Milan moving any closer to making this one actually happen? Well, I mean, <laughs> Eriksen's agent will be meeting Spurs chairman Daniel Levy. We expect that to happen today. Um, they're willing to pay £11 million plus two bonuses to sign Eriksen this month. That's according to our colleagues in Italy. Um, I think, from all sides, this needs to get... Done. It's been going on for quite a while. The interesting thing is, I, I kept saying on this show, and people keep expecting it to be Ericsson's last game, game after game after game, but Jose Mourinho is still using Christian Ericsson like he did against Watford the other day. He's still got that in him just to get that key goal. But I think there needs to be some kind of clarity now on the situation. I do expect it to happen this week. Yeah, I mean, 10 days to go in this window. Emma, do you think this one's kind of unnecessarily dragging out? Could this be a potential deadline day oh. signing that actually should have been wrapped up in week one? Oh, I hope not, because we've, we've still got a lot of shows left and a lot of, <laughs> you know, time to fill talking about him. But we've actually had quite a few tweets as well saying, is it possible that he'll still be at the club, um, you know, come Thursday night, uh, Friday night next week? And... I mean, away from kind of the valuation and, and the meeting and everything like that, I more think that Daniel Levy won't let that happen. I think it's more he wants to set a precedent here that this can't happen with players at my club and send out a bit of a message as well. Because if you look at, I mean, I can't remember probably that Sol Campbell incident nearly 20 years ago now where, you know, the club have constantly... Ha yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> but the club, you know, since Daniel Levy's come in, the club yeah. have always had the upper hand, haven't they? They've had this kind of rigid yeah. uh, wage structure where they constantly kind of re-extend players' contracts and keep them at the club, give them enough to tie them down. And if you look at senior players who have left the club previously, they've had to go for a substantial fee. You think of, like, Luka Modric to Real Madrid, was that £30 million? Mm. Um, but he still had four years left on his contract. Gareth Bale the year after, three years left on his contract, £85 million. Pounds. And I almost think that Daniel Levy at this point will want to send a message out that this is not how you behave at this football club. Mm. Yeah, Danny, I wonder from a player's perspective, how difficult is it when there is this speculation over your future to keep playing for your club? I mean, Ericsson, like Michael said, he's still in that uh, team. Mourinho's putting him in there. And I wonder perhaps even as a teammate of yeah. a player who has been linked with moves away and, a, and as a captain, because you've captained every team that you've yeah. been with. Have you been in a situation where there's been players linked with moves away? Yeah, I mean, of course, at this time of year, you know what's going on and you're in the changing rooms day to day and the training ground and, and lads are chatting. And as a, as a player, I'm guessing, you know, for Christian Eriksen at the minute, he'll be onto his agent daily asking him, you know, what's happening. And at the same time, I think, you know, you've mentioned he's got to try and do his job for Tottenham as well. Um, he's getting paid by the club and just to go out there and, and keep playing and try and do the best of his ability for the club um, and then see what happens after that, you know. Yeah, and I mean, how difficult is that? Because we've actually been talking about Ericsson's stats and how mm. they have kind of gone downhill a little bit. Do you think it's difficult to keep the focus when you kind of think, well, I'm not actually going to be here past mm. January? 
Yeah, possibly. I mean, I can only speak on my how I yeah. feel about it. But um, I think he's, you know, he's got to go out there. He's playing for a big team. Um, you know, games are coming thick and fast, and just keep himself ticking over. Keep playing as, as best as he can to his ability, and, and see what goes from there. Really, and don't get me wrong. You know, it'll be in his head that you know I could be moving in the next week or, or day or so, and you know, see what happens. And I'm sure his agent, again, as I said, he'll be on to him on the phone daily, talking to him. So see how it plans out in the next day or, so, or the we, week or so. We said in the summer that the three players, Christian Eriksen, Toby Ardaverod and Jan Vertonghen, were the three. Who were, who were the ones who you could expect to stay? I'm not really surprised that Toby Ardaverod extended his contract. I wouldn't be surprised if Jan Vertonghen expen extended his contract. Jose Mourinho can't afford to lose anybody else. They need to bring players in, not let them go. This is a really difficult situation. The problem for Tottenham fans, they're seeing a player who was second to David Silva in nearly every statistic, but dropped quite considerably. However, Mourinho is still using him. He might even use him against Norwich City tomorrow night. Quite incredible for a player everyone knows is leaving. For Inter Milan, and if I was an Inter Milan supporter, I'd say, please, just get this done. Because who <laughs> knows, in the summer, Paris Saint-Germain might turn around, or someone might just turn around and say, do you know what? I fancy a bit of Christian Eriksen. However, I don't think Eriksen, although I have not asked him this, I don't think he probably expected to move to Inter Milan a year ago. I think he was maybe looking, with the greatest respect to Inter, slightly higher. Why don't you ask him then? Huh? Ask him then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, but, um, see, see in, terms of, in terms of Inter, I don't know what their finances are at all, but to sort of settle in and fighting over a couple of million pounds, mm. they're getting a... He's 27, Christian mm. Eriksen. He's still got his best years in front of him. Yes, he hasn't been playing to his potential um, in the last couple of months, the last few months, but they're still getting an unbelievable player there for what we're talking, eight, 10 million pounds. Completely like you agree. say, just, just get it done. Just get it done. I don't know why they're leaving it open for others, like you say, to come in. The amount of matches I saw Christian Eriksen last season, like Brighton last year in April, Spurs were losing so many games, but they wanted to get in the top four. Eriksen got it in him, hasn't he? From, yeah. Just from 20 yards, mm -hmm. just to... He, could, he might not touch the ball for the whole game, but he's got that in him. But just the spark's gone, and the fans know it. The fans know it. So you're absolutely right. I just think a couple of million there. Conte will be desperate to get this over the line, and it's looking like it's turning into very, pretty much a Premier League All Star yeah. eleven. What, what is ten? What is eight, ten, twelve million in today's market? No, it's nothing. I know. I mean, I, as I say, I don't know what Inter Milan have got. I don't know in terms of financial fair play for them, but that's nothing. They get an absolute bargain there. Yeah, uh, and I mean, Michael, you alluded to it there. Inter going after quite a few Premier League players. We've just brought you the latest on Victor Moses. He is uh, in Milan uh, ahead of undergoing his medical. And I mean, you said a Premier League 11. Antonio Conte, he does seem to be building a fantastic team there and players that we all recognise from the mm. Premier League. I mean, how exciting a prospect is this? Eriksen potentially joining all these other players that he's got. It's great, yeah. It's, it's, it's tried and trusted players he knows from the Premier League who could probably do a job in Serie A. I mean, he's very excited. As I, said, I think Keith's nailed it, really. I mean, to get a 27-year-old Christian Eriksen who just wants a change. I, I, to his defence, I don't think he's shown an uh, a bad attitude in the sense of saying things, but it's on the pitch which fans can clearly see. Is he going 110% yeah. in the tackle? Is he doing that? I'm not so sure, but the stats prove that he isn't a player. He was at Tottenham, but... He's one of the longest serving players at Tottenham. He just wants to change. I mean, in, Inter, going for the, sorry, Inter going for the title. It's going to be really interesting to see the amount of players who've played in the Premier League in that team. You mentioned Moses, you mentioned Ashley Young, potentially Christian Eriksen. Remember, they've got Lukaku, Lukaku there already. Yeah. They've got Sanchez there. It's suddenly almost like a, a Premier League team now. So Conte's obviously learned something from his time in England. He's getting the characters he know, knows in. It'll be interesting to see whether these guys can make a difference to try and topple Juve at, at the top. Yeah, well, so, I mean, someone that Antonio Conte did bring out the best and was Victor Moses when he was at Chelsea. Yeah. We, we spoke about it yesterday in yeah. terms of just how well he did under Antonio Conte. And Danny, I wonder, we often talk about like the pool of teams. Yeah. What about the pool of a manager? Because Victor Moses must be looking at this and thinking, you know, I really thrived under yeah. Conte and that's the reason I want to go. Yeah, to go and work with him again. Yeah, as you say, he gave him that wing-back role at Chelsea and he, and he had a great season under him and um, I'm sure that's on his mind, you know, he, if he, he's coming for him again. Um, as you mentioned, you know, into a, seem to be fishing in the Premier League and taking a lot of players and obviously players who Conte knows and um, I'm sure he'd be looking forward to, to go and work with him again as I say after the after that season he had at Chelsea with him. It's intriguing as well because where is Ashley Young going to play yeah. and if they get Victor Moses because I think Victor Moses for Chelsea a few years ago was sensational yeah. in that left wing back role. He made it, it looked like a temporary role for him but then all of a sudden he was fantastic so be interesting where they 
decide to put Ashley Young as yeah. well. Good shout, yeah. yeah, we've got plenty more to talk about. Keep using that hashtag transfer talk. Have your say. We will bring you the pundits point with Danny next as we focus on what it's like to be a free agent. Welcome back to Good Morning Transfers, and it's time for the Pundits Point. Danny's back here, and he's going to give us well, some advice. Lots of players being linked with moves this window, but dozens of them are free agents looking to be signed by clubs out for a bargain. So, Danny, it's a bit of a rough situation, but what are your tips for players who are looking to get signed by clubs? Um, the first one, the first one is, well, we've got three points, actually. The first one is maintain your fitness now just yeah. going to a little bit of detail about that yeah well obviously if, you, if you've not been playing um, you know you can do all the running and all the your own stuff you like really but if you're not fully into a pre-season at a club it can be difficult you're doing your own stuff um, it's, it's not quite the same as doing a, a full pre-season with the other 20 25 lads um, so yeah you've got to try and keep on top of it keep yourself fit because you don't know when the, the call's going to come yeah well, I yeah. can't imagine you can just rock up at your local leisure center and yeah. you know but put the cones out the cones that must out, be yeah. pretty difficult to, to be in charge of that yeah I mean as, as you mentioned there you go down the gym um, you exercise bike running machines you're doing your own stuff but it's not quite the same as, as going through what you call a good solid two-week pre-season with the fitness guys who, who put you through your paces and um, I'm working with the other lads really it is different I've done it once in my career so uh, it's tough but You've got to be ready um, for when that call comes. I bet you're getting flashbacks thinking about horrible pre-seasons. Oh, yes. We'll move on. Peppy or agent? I presume that means just be a pest. Yeah, um, as, you, as you say, when the window's open, uh, you're out of contract and keep on to him, see what's there for you. Um, you know, one or two things might come. and he's, he's obviously busy sorting other players out as well, so just keep dropping him a, a call or a text message, say what's happening, is there still interest from that club? Uh, is there a deal to be had? And the third one? is look at the bigger picture. Now, what, what do you mean by that? I think um, you've got to weigh things up. If you've got a family, um, if you've got children, there might be a, a call that there might be an option to go abroad and play. Um, so you have to weigh things up in terms of, are your kids settled at a school somewhere? Is your wife happy in the country? These, these types of things come into play as well, which obviously a lot of fans maybe don't think come into play. Um, Will you ever consider about making a move abroad? Yeah, I had a couple of, couple of opportunities to go and play abroad. Um, I just felt at that time for me it wasn't quite right. Um, so I opted to, to stay over here and, and carried on my career in, in, the, in the UK and England. So, um, but yeah, there are times where you have got to weigh things up and it's a, it's a choice to be made. Now, we know a lot of free agents actually watch the show. What would your message to them be right now if they're thinking about, oh, I need, I need to get a yeah. club? They'll obviously be, be chomping at the bit to, to get sorted and um, there's a lot of lads in that boat as well who haven't got a club. So just got to, as, you say, as we said there, just keep ticking over, um, keep yourself fit as you can and uh, just be ready for, for when you get sorted and, and you get the call off your agent to, to go in somewhere. Makes complete sense. Like, Danny, rejoin the panel. Because, again, we're going to be discussing another club looking to do business this month. Yes, absolutely. We're going to talk about Newcastle now, of course, suffering with those injury problems at the moment. But, Keith, uh, some good news for Newcastle fans, potentially, as they're moving closer to bringing someone else in. Yeah, things beginning to hot up at Newcastle, and here I am down in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, not in the mix of things, which I probably should be. Um, but, yeah, we do expect Newcastle to conclude a deal for uh, Nabil uh, Bentaleb, the former Spurs midfielder. We expect that to be concluded uh, later today. He had his medical on Tyneside yesterday. Now, that's a, a loan deal until the end of the season with what we understand to have an option to make it permanent at the end. Remember, Bentaleb is still only 25 years old. He's at Schalke just now, but really struggling uh, to get any uh, game time. So that would be um, Bentaleb in and they remain in talks with Inter Milan. They have been for the best part of a week now for their uh, Austrian international winger, Valentino uh, Lazaro. Now, I would think with the imminent arrival of Victor Moses at Inter, the domino effect could come into play there and that would allow Lazaro to um, finalise that move to, to Newcastle. So that also would be a, a loan move with a, a view to a permanent uh, transfer at the end of it. So Newcastle beginning uh, to make moves, but they're still desperate for a left wing back. We, we uh, broke the news yesterday from Steve Bruce's press conference, the season ending injuries for Paul Dummett and Yetro Willems, leaving them only Matt Ritchie, who's just back from injury um, himself. And yet, no clues as to a striker. I've been saying all window they need a striker. Not only have they not got one, there aren't any.
So Newcastle can join Manchester United, can join <laughs> Spurs, can join Chelsea, can join Aston Villa in this desperate need for a, for a striker this January. Yeah, let's just focus a little bit more uh, on Ben Taleb. You said he's 25 years old. He's not been part of Schalke's first team for a year due to unprofessional behaviour, including being late and failing to report for German lessons. Uh, he's a name that Spurs fans will be familiar with, of course. Michael, what do you know about him from his time at Tottenham? Yeah, quite a bit from his time. He was in the academy for, for, for a few years at Spurs. Spurs under Tim Sherwood. Then when Tim Sherwood became interim manager at Tottenham Hotspur, Sherwood brought him and Ryan Mason together. There was a bit of a partnership. They had a very successful partnership in the end. They were instrumental when Spurs beat Chelsea 5-3. He didn't really look back and he had a really good second half of that season. Cultured footballer, I read box to box. He's not box to box, in, in my opinion. I think he's more of a cultured footballer. He can spot a pass, a bit like Shelby maybe, he can spot, spot a good ball. I think Newcastle fans will like him. The problem, I hear about fallouts and this and that at Tottenham. I think it was just he found it hard, a bit too much too soon. And also, Deli Alley, Spurs did not expect him to do so well when he came in for Tottenham, when he was signed from MK Dons. He started the season and he scored so many goals, he didn't look back. Benzleb then had a few injuries and he just found it hard to accept that he was no longer in the team. He had a little bit of a fallout, I think, with Pochettino. Nothing serious, but he did move on. He didn't want to go. He was desperate to stay and would have cut, he would have walked back to London. So, um, Newcastle supporters, you'll get a player who will really give what? it his all and you'll end up liking him, I think. Yeah, we're just going to get a little bit of news uh, from Burnley now because, Keith, you've got some news just into us here. On yeah, the yeah um, I can tell you that uh, Burnley, as I understand it, have knocked back loan offers um, from a trio of championship clubs for their defender, Ben Gibson. That's Fulham. Um, that is Huddersfield and also his former club Middlesbrough, uh, as I understand it, have all made loan offers for the defender. Of course, he joined just uh, what, 18 months ago in a £50 million transfer. I struggled to force his way into the team due to a succession of injuries. He's back fit, desperate to play football. But despite all three championship clubs looking to bring him in, um, it's my understanding that Burnley have knocked that back. And the reason for that is that they have been insistent throughout this whole window that they'll only allow a player to leave once they get a replacement. In. So it looks as though Ben Gibson is going to have to wait until they manage to bring someone in. I would expect him to leave this window, but at this stage, knockbacks from all those three clubs for the defender. Yeah, there's one for us to keep an eye on. Though. Uh, lots of you getting in touch. We were, of course, talking about Edison Cavani at the start of the show. Lots of Tottenham fans uh, contacting us using that hashtag transfer talk. Trevor says Cavani will join Spurs. Why? Meridio and Stadium. Chelsea and Man United not sexy enough. Spurs have the edge. Wage is not a problem. He doesn't need the money. Uh, Jonathan also says Spurs should definitely try and sign Cavani. They need another goal scorer up front. He'd be the perfect replacement for Kane. Uh, and Nick says Spurs, yeah, they need to sign at least one striker. Cavani would be a perfect fit. And a winger that has pace and trickery. He ends by saying, bring back Gareth Bale, please. Yeah, keep getting in touch using that hashtag. Also, don't forget to download the latest episode of the Transfer Talk podcast. It's on iTunes and Spreaker. Uh, next up here on Good Morning Transfers, Aston Villa's wish list is complete. But will they add another striker to their ranks? Plus, we'll get some of Danny's transfer tales. Stay with us. <laughs> now then, at the start of the window, we went through every club's January wish list, their wants and needs for this transfer window. Well, congratulations, Aston Villa. Your wish list is pretty much complete. Goalkeeper, check Pepe Reina in from AC Milan to cover for Tom Heaton and Jed Steer after their injuries. A new midfielder. Well, the first person through the door was Danny Drinkwater on loan from Chelsea. And now a striker is in too. And Juana Samata has joined from Genk. And Villa are showing off now. They may well even be signing another forward too. But what about Wolves? He always looks grumpy, Nuno. And at the moment, his checklist is... Well, it's, it's incomplete, but there may well be three signings this week. Young Ecuadorian striker Leonardo Campagna's £300,000 deal from, uh, to move to the club may well be finalised even today, but they are after a more senior striker. We understand that is Nelson Oliveira, who's now at AEK Athens. A defensive midfielder has eluded them for about a year, but the club is now targeting a winger as well, and they're in talks to sign Daniel Pedence from Olympiacos, who want around £21.5 million. Pounds. So Aston Villa and Wolves may well be two of the most active clubs in the window this month. Well, thank you, Anton. I'm sure we can get a smile out of Nuno if he manages <laughs> to check off mm. that wish list. Um, so Villa ticking off their wish list pretty well there. And Emma, in Buana Samata, an interesting signing here. Yeah, I'm really intrigued about this guy, actually, because I hadn't heard much about him. 
typed him into Instagram, as you do, just wanted to find a bit more about him. And he's at 1.2 million Instagram followers. I thought that's a lot for someone I hadn't heard too much about comes that's from Tanzania. Than you, Emma. It's, a, it's a lot more than you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this is someone who's quite a big name back in Tanzania, voted Tanzania's um, most influential young person wow. a few Ooh. years ago. So yeah, off the pitch, but um, seems an inter interesting character. But on the pitch, top scorer in Belgium last season. From Genk, we know a lot about players who come from that kind of product line. The likes of Christian Benteke, obviously, familiar name to Aston Villa fans, uh, Kevin De Bruyne, uh, Courtois, uh, Ndidi, you know, yeah. it's a good product line coming out of Genk and, you know, he seems, he's 27 at the moment, nearing his peak, seems like a player who can pull goals out of thin air, mm. so someone I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah it'll be good to see what he brings uh, to this side and Danny Villa, you know, we're seeing there, they're ticking off their wish list where they wanted to bring players in. How much of a boost do you think this will give Villa uh, and just in general, clubs that are maybe struggling at the bottom yeah. of the table, you get some new faces in, does it give you a boost? Certainly for Villa, they need it. Um, obviously, the, the goalkeeper crisis, they've, they've taken care of that. They brought Danny Drinkwater in, a bit of experience in the middle of the park. And um, obviously, with Wesley being injured and, and they're in desperate need of some goals, um, you know, relying on Jack Grealish to create and score goals for them at the minute. So, bringing this lad in now will hopefully prove a, a good purchase for them. Yeah, uh, Danny, we love getting a player's insight into all things transfer, so it is really good having you on the show this morning. Uh, before we talk a bit more about your own experiences, we've got to ask you a bit about one of your former international teammates, Gareth Bailey, who's someone that we spoke so much about. I think yeah. every single episode in the summer we were talking about the future of Gareth Bale, quieting down a little bit <laughs> I think uh, in January. At some point yes, already. he has, he yeah. has, but not about his future. <laughs> uh, lots of speculation, of course, in the summer. It does look like he is going to see out his contract at Real Madrid. Uh, what was he like? around the dressing room and how much would you like to see him back in the Premier League? Um, yeah, he was obviously in the, in the Welsh squad. He's quite a quiet lad, to be fair. Um, that's going back seven, eight years now. Um, he might have changed, obviously, with his experiences he's had at uh, Real Madrid. Um, obviously, a great player. And I think he's having a tough time of it there. Obviously, him and Zidane have had the differences this season. Uh, I think it'd be good for him to get playing regular football again. And I'm sure, you know, as we've mentioned, there'll be plenty of takers, albeit wages might be... a bit of a hindrance but um, I'm sure there'll be one or two keeping a close eye on him yeah, to get him back over here. Do you think we will, will ever see him back in the Premier League and if so where do you think you could see him fit in? I know a lot of Tottenham fans perhaps would like to see him back in a Spurs shirt but where could you see him fitting in? Well he's obviously coming up to 30 I think this summer so um, he's still got plenty of football left in him and I think you know whether it be Spurs I'm sure with his with his ties to Spurs he he'd love to come and play in that new stadium um, Manchester United I'm sure would be a, a big carrot for him as well and wages wise I'm sure they'll be able to take care of that so um, one or two interesting ones and I'm sure you know he's, he's got a young family as well he'll, he'll be weighing things up over in uh, Madrid yeah absolutely uh, I'm gonna open this one to the panel anything <laughs> you've desperate to ask Danny Collins about his own experiences oh do you want to leave mine till the end <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we were talking obviously before you came in this morning. Tell us about your Premier League debut because it sounded a bit like a baptism of fire. Yeah, it was, uh, it was down at Highbury, um, <laughs> Arsenal away, and I see you want to ease us in. But um, I think we lost 3 1, 3 2, or 3 1 it was on that day. Uh, I think Henri and Van Persie up top, and uh, just, you know, it was a great ground. We mentioned White Hart Lane before, a nice, tight, compact ground, and, and Highbury is similar, you know, it was a great place to play. A bit quieter. <laughs> <laughs> how do you go? How do you go about marking someone like that? You know, in your Premier League um, debut, up against Henri. Like, what do you yeah, do? I, think I was left back. I think Perez was on my side. I think I played left back that day. Change well, position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, a good experience. You know, a good learning experience. Um, obviously, I, I came from Chester a couple of seasons before. Got promoted with Sunderland up into the Premier League, and so wow. as you know, we've, we've mentioned there, baptism of fire in a way, but a good experience and something I look back on. Wow. We love deadline day. Um, we're always busy, <laughs> but from a player's perspective, because you've been involved as well on deadline yeah. day, what is it like? Do you have to charge your phone constantly, or do you, what is it like? Yeah, um, my move from um, from Sunderland to Stoke. Actually, we we played Stoke on the Saturday, and so I stayed down. It was I knew that Tony was interested in taking me down to Stoke. Um, I'd spoke to him on the phone and stayed down the agent came across on the sunday and then the deadline was on the monday so we we got the deal done mm -hmm. sitting around for five six hours I, I had the medical and, and it's a lot of waiting about but finally it, it gets sorted and you, you're looking forward then to, to getting mm -hmm. out on the training pitch and, and meeting your new teammates mm -hmm. but uh, I, again i was quite a quick deal but i'm sure there's there's lads you know mentioning ericsson previously there he's, he's been waiting from his thoughts perhaps for a year or so yeah. so 
Um, you know, there's different times that you just have to bide your time and, and wait for it to happen. Of course, Danny, you played under Roy Keane for much of your time uh, at Sunderland. Of course, we saw him, didn't we, on Sunday, having that yeah, running yeah, battle yeah, with Jamie yeah. Carragher. So we know what he's like now in, in the studio. What was he like to play under as, as a manager? Similar. Obviously, you know, a lot of managers are the same. They, um, they, can, they can go off it at times in the changing room. Uh, Roy was no different. I don't mind that as a player. I think you need that at times for, for a manager to come in and, and raise, the, raise the spirits in the changing room, should we say. <laughs> um, but no, I, I enjoyed working with him. Um, he wanted things doing right at the club. And, and when he came in, as we mentioned before, he brought a lot of players in, eight or nine new players. Sometimes that doesn't quite gel uh, at a club, but thankfully for us at Sunderland it did, and we, we had a good season and went on to win the championship. I think people forget how well a, a good a job he'd done at Sunderland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he did, and I think, obviously, going into the Premier League the season after, I know he had one or two goings on with the chairman, a fallout, and Roy, you know, I think it's obvious that Roy's perhaps the, the type of character who's, who's not one to, to sit around and be told what to do by the chairman, and obviously it, it ended for him, but um, I think... It'd be nice to see him back there one day. Um, he's taking his time out of management at the minute. He's, he's enjoying his punditry work, I think, um, with Sky Sports. So we'll see what happens for him in the future. When you're watching the battle at the uh, weekend, <laughs> Carragher against Keane, whose side were you on? Mm. <laughs> I won't say it was on him. I enjoyed watching it. It was good. I think it's good to have them debates <laughs> in the sitting studio. The it was, uh, yeah, sitting on the fence, I was. But good viewing, I think, uh, I think the public enjoyed it. Yeah, Danny, you, you touched on it a little bit there, that kind of rise from Chester to Sunderland. What was that like? Just give us a little bit more of an insight into, you know, you're playing in the lower leagues and then yeah. suddenly you're playing in the Premier League. Yeah, it was for me. Um, obviously, we, for Chester, we won the, the conference the year before, gone up into League Two. I think I played 10 or 11 games that season and knew there was a bit of interest and, and my agent called me um, after the game on the Saturday and said, there's a deal been agreed with Sunderland and so I think Sunderland were third in the championship at the time. So for me, it was quite a big step up from just going up into League Two for them to go to a, a team with a big expectation, a big fan base and all the facilities in place. Um, good experience and had to, had to learn quick. Yeah, how much say did you have in these moves that you've made over the past years? Is it a case of you just kind of sitting, waiting for your agent to tell you? And you spoke a little bit with Anton there yeah. about the considerations you have to have in yeah, terms of, of location, family. How much input did you have or was it very much like, I'll go where you tell me? Uh, not really. I mean, they can come and say you've got two or three clubs who are shown interest. Have you got any preference geographical-wise, um, you know, questions along this? And you have to weigh things up, as we've said, with your, with your family. Um, and, and footballing-wise, what you think is best for you and your family at the time. So, um, you know, I had them decisions to make. But, um, you know, for me, obviously going from Chester to Sunderland was a big move and one that I enjoyed. Yeah, and Danny, we've said it, it's great having you on the show this morning. What about your own future? Uh, what's next for you? Um, yeah, obviously I retired at the end of uh, last season, um, turned 39. So, looking at the next step, done a, done a bit of media work recently and um, looking to get into the coaching, done my B licence a couple of years ago. So, it'd be nice to, to get back out on the training pitch and get the boots on again. Would you go back to one of your former clubs as a coach? Yeah, of course I would. Yeah, as you say, we weigh things up and see what see what's about. And um, I'm sure something will, will come up in the, in the future and look forward to it. Do you miss not tying on those boots? You... Yeah. I do, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been to watch a few games this season and I think it's when they're coming out the tunnel at three o'clock and you get the, get the feeling that you'd like to be back out on the pitch. That's the sort of time where you miss it. And, and obviously, being around the training ground, a lot of lads will say it when they've retired, you, you miss that day-to-day -day yeah. banter, if you like, around the training ground. And, um, but it's good. And as I say, I've had a bit of time off with my family now and looking forward to, to getting my boots back on on the training ground. Well, that is it for Good Morning yeah. Transfers this morning. Danny, great to have you as part of the transfer team and getting your insight there. Uh, remember, the Transfer Top podcast available on iTunes, Spreaker and the Sky Sports website as well. Thank you to Michael, to Keith and to Emma. Uh, remember, Good Morning Transfers returns tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And Transfer Talk returns in just a couple of hours. That's from midday. We'll be joined by Will Brazier from the Football Social. Darmish and Cavi back with the Transfer Show at 7 o'clock tonight. But stay with us next up on SSN. Matt Upson joins Rob Watson. That's on Football Centre. Mm -hmm.